We saw those images of queues at uh, Dublin Airport, particularly in Terminal 1, spilling out even onto the tarmac. Well, uh, we're going to find out what's happening in the airports uh, of this Easter weekend, which promises to be one of the busiest uh, ever. Uh, Owen Curry is on the line now, editor of Air and Travel magazine. Owen, good morning. Good morning. So, um, are people frustrated, giving out yards? Uh, are they queuing for hours and hours and hours? Or has the recruitment worked and things are, what, back to normal? Well, the queues have been working really well today, but we're only really at the second day of a big Easter weekend and the, another weekend, another crisis. The real focus of frustration and the problems that are arising are on the car parking front. Uh, anybody trying to book a car park now will see that the long-term uh, car parks are full and the short-term pre-booking facility is, is full as well for Saturday and limited availability for Sunday. The queues are really working really well today. Um, um, there would be 20, 25 minutes between the terminals. Everybody quite happy to wait for social media for a change. It's full of uh, customers talking about how quickly they got to the gate. But it's early in the game. We have 500,000 going through the airport this weekend just to give a picture of that we have 305 flights departed today it's a long time since we had 300 flights in the same day in Dublin airport listeners would have heard me say in the past that the rush hour of the airport is 6 a.m to 9 a.m a little bit different for easter we're going to have a very busy afternoon and time will tell whether the good start to the day will hold up now, did they change any of the uh, advice and instruction about uh, when to arrive at the airport? Because last week we were suggesting that by asking everyone to come four hours before their flight, they were literally constructing a clue that, queue that didn't need to be as long. Absolutely, and it really told early in the day. Um, they have the, opened the queues 24 hours, or opened the security channel 24 hours, but they only have one or two on. And we had people, you know, leaving at 11 p.m. the night before for 6.30 flights and spending four or five hours in the airport. That created this big queue when they were least ready for it. Around 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, the queue is going to 70 and 80 minutes, not because of the numbers, but because the full security shift doesn't come on till 6 a.m. They've tweaked that a little bit. That was last weekend's big issue. And they also changed the advice, as you said, they are saying two and a half hours for short haul, three and a half for long haul. And don't forget, long haul is more complicated. First of all, those baggage queues, there are three long haul airlines, Terminal 1 and Qatar and Etihad. And also you've got an extra security for the US clearance. That was running 20, 25 minutes on top of the 45 to an hour that you were. And the US immigration is running at about 45 minutes. You do need the three hours going west, but short haul, two and a half hours, and my rule of thumb really for listeners this morning is that um, we haven't seen queues go beyond 60 minutes. So 60 minutes should be about it. Fast track was actually up to 30 minutes. Uh, I don't know what they call fast track when it reaches 30 mm -hmm. minutes. But that's what, if, once you've allowed that, uh, you will probably, you will be okay. Flights have not been missed by customers. But as I say, um, that's it's early in the day. We'll have a big afternoon. It's a big test this afternoon. And we also have Saturday and Sunday to get through. Yeah. So the advice to people is what? Check the website to see what the queuing time is. Um, although that's it's too late, today. you know, at that point it's too late. You should be uh, at the airport uh, at the time you're doing that. So two and a half hours, unless you hear that things are disastrous. To keep an eye on it, but it's real time. And I've seen that, you know, it's on the app, the Terminal 1, Security Terminal 2, Security Queue Time. I've seen that jump by 20 minutes very quickly. At one stage, it was down altogether, but it is back on the app. And the other thing that the Dublin Airport app that we introduced last week is giving you a guide to how far your gate is uh, and the other side of security. That can be pretty important, particularly if you're going to the end of the 100 gates that Ryan Air uses. Okay, a final point. Uh, one of our listeners wants to know, collecting a daughter from a Barcelona midday flight Easter Sunday, is it still possible after all the talk about picking up people and dropping off people at the airport? Uh, is there any change in that at the moment? Uh, you're not supposed to be picking up people at the drop-off zone, um, but there is no charge. If this is the answer to the question. The drop-off zone won't, the charges won't be introduced till the autumn. What they will be introducing then 
is a, a sort of a, a barrier where you have to pay to get through it. They haven't decided on the price of that. That's a little bit further down the line. But where there is a big issue with cars. We're one car parked down from what we had before COVID. That's about 20% capacity. And it is filling uh, quite rapidly. It, as I say, Saturday, fall and Sunday. So the shift, the, shift, the focus is, will probably be shifting uh, from the queues within the terminal and outside the terminal, as you say, to the issue of car parking. All right, Owen, thank you very much for joining us. That's Owen Corrie, editor of Air and Travel magazine. Andre